It's Nina again, and Bernie too. I'm going to tell you about our latest space adventure. Bernie and I had a wonderful time. Here's how it all happened. After we returned from our trip to the inner planets, Bernie and I made several alterations to the van ship so we could make the trip to the outer planets. According to my calculations, we were ready to blast off to the outer planets. Bernie booted up the computer, and I installed my new outer planet software. All right, Mr. Computer, let's blast off for the outer planets. All passengers fasten their seat belts. This includes Captain Nina and you too, Bernie. Wave to Mr. Merkel, Bernie. He'll be mad again. While we're on our way, let's see why the giant planets are called giants. If the sun were the size of this basketball, the giant planets would appear small. But they are very large compared to our tiny Earth. The fifth outer planet is Pluto. It is a tiny world, the smallest planet in our solar system. Nina, we need to slow down a bit. We are entering the asteroid belt 300 million kilometers from the sun. The asteroid belt is located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. What is the asteroid belt? Out here, countless rocks orbit the sun. These rocks are called asteroids. They range in size from several hundred kilometers across to a grain of sand. There are millions of asteroids. In fact, there are so many that they frequently smash into each other. The broken pieces are knocked off into space. These broken pieces become meteors. We see them at night, and we call them falling stars. Watch out, Bernie! Whew, that was close. I think we are leaving the asteroid belt now. We are on our way to Jupiter. Heading Jupiter. Distance from Sun, 778,300,000 kilometers. Revolution around Sun, 11.86 Earth years. Diameter, 142,800 kilometers. Number of moons, 16. Look, Nina, we're approaching Jupiter, the largest planet. Jupiter orbits the Sun in about 12 Earth years. But it rotates very rapidly. Jupiter's day is just 10 Earth hours long. That's very fast, considering Jupiter's great size. Let's see what you would weigh if you could be on Jupiter. Nina's weight on Earth, 65 pounds. On Jupiter, 152 pounds. I guess I would be really big on Jupiter. No, Nina, you wouldn't be bigger. You would just be heavier on Jupiter, because Jupiter has so much more mass than Earth does. When planets have more mass, they have more gravity. Jupiter's fast rotation produces strong winds. These winds are similar to the jet streams on Earth, except there are many more of them on Jupiter. The wind streams move along the same paths. They are the main reason for the bands that we see encircling the planet. All the giant outer planets have similar bands, although Jupiter's are the most vivid and colorful. The Jupiter we see is actually the very tops of Jupiter's clouds. The highest clouds are probably composed of ammonia ice. Nobody is sure what gives the clouds their colors. Some scientists think traces of sulfur or phosphorus are responsible. Others believe the coloring agents are organic molecules. There's the famous Great Red Spot. This spot is huge, even bigger than Earth. What is the Great Red Spot? It is a gigantic storm which rotates at over 300 kilometers per hour. The red spot moves from east to west across the face of the planet. This storm has lasted for at least 300 years. I'm glad we don't have storms like that on Earth. Jupiter is composed mostly of hydrogen and helium. In this way, Jupiter, Saturn, 
Uranus and Neptune are more like the Sun than the inner planets. In fact, if Jupiter had been more massive, it would have become a star, and we would have had two suns in our solar system. Jupiter's layer of clouds is about 150 kilometers thick. Beneath the clouds is a dense layer of liquid and gaseous hydrogen and helium, 20,000 kilometers thick. Deep within this layer, the pressure reaches about 100,000 times Earth's atmospheric pressure. Deeper in the interior, the pressures increase to a tremendous 4 million times Earth's pressure, and hydrogen becomes like a liquid metal. This layer of liquid metallic hydrogen is about 40,000 kilometers thick. In the core of the planet, the pressure may be 100 million times that of Earth. The temperature is 30,000 degrees Celsius. Jupiter's core is probably made up of the same elements as are found in the inner planets. Can we land on Jupiter? No, Nina, there is no place to land. Jupiter and all of the giant planets are very alien places, quite unlike the inner planets. From here to the center of the planet, Jupiter is all gas and liquid, a world without a surface. There's no solid ground on which to walk or build a house. You can be on Earth or Mars, but you can't be on Jupiter, only in Jupiter and anywhere in Jupiter from the tops of the clouds to the core of the planet. All you could ever do is float. Is there any solid ground out there? What about on Jupiter's moons? Does Jupiter have any moons? Jupiter has four large moons and 12 small moons. The four large moons are called Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. Each is very different from the other. Look, there's Callisto, the outermost large moon. Because the moons of Jupiter are so far from the Sun, their surfaces are very cold, 150 degrees below zero Celsius. Scientists believe that Callisto is a ball of water ice, which surrounds a core of solid rock. Most of the large moons of the outer planets have a similar composition, ice covering rock. However, the thickness of the ice varies from moon to moon. Callisto has the most heavily cratered surface of any object in the solar system. The craters are the result of millions of collisions with meteors. Off we go to Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. Ganymede is actually larger than the planets Mercury and Pluto. Parts of Ganymede are heavily cratered. The craters show up as white areas. Ganymede has a large number of grooves. Perhaps these grooves are cracks created on the surface a billion years ago as the watery surface of Ganymede froze. Look down below. There's Europa orbiting Jupiter. And behind it is Io. Get out your ice skates. The next stop is Europa, the largest ice skating rink in the solar system. Europa's surface is very smooth, perfect for ice skating. All right, computer, stop acting silly. Bernie, check his circuits. The dark lines we see on the surface are hundreds of kilometers long. Some scientists say they may be cracks which were filled in with darker colored water from inside the planet. Europa is probably warmer than Callisto and Ganymede. Beneath a relatively thin layer of ice, Europa might have an ocean of liquid water. And in this very dark, very murky ocean, life may have once existed, or perhaps still exists. If you went ice fishing on Europa, it is possible that you might catch something. We're closing in on Io. Io is the innermost of Jupiter's large moons. Io's surface looks something like an overcooked pizza. The colors you see are due to different forms of sulfur which cover the surface. Whereas Io's sister moons are cold and peaceful, Io rages with volcanic activity. Io is a strange place. Its volcanoes erupt sulfur lava. Huge molten sulfur pools lie near the surface. There may even be lakes of liquid sulfur on the surface. Volcanic eruptions shoot sulfur lava and gas at the speed of bullets to extraordinary heights. Huge mushroom clouds, up to 300 kilometers high, 
rise from above the volcanic centers and great snowstorms of sulfur dust from these eruptions fall over areas the size of Alaska. Smaller eruptions last for months or even years. Look, Nina, this is Amalthea, one of Jupiter's smaller moons. It is covered with sulfur dust from Io's volcanoes. Let's get away from all of this dust. I'm setting a course for Saturn, mighty lord of the rings. Good. And I'll review some facts about Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. Jupiter and all of the other giant planets are made mostly of hydrogen and helium. Jupiter has a huge storm known as the Great Red Spot. Jupiter has 16 moons. Heading Saturn, distance from Sun, 1,427,000,000 kilometers. Revolution around Sun, 29.46 Earth years. Diameter, 120,000 kilometers. Number of moons, 17. Nina, we are approaching Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet. It orbits the Sun in 29 and one-half Earth years. Saturn's day is just over 10 hours long. Like Jupiter, Saturn is also composed predominantly of hydrogen and helium. How much would I weigh on Saturn? Nina's weight on Earth, 65 pounds. On Saturn, 60 pounds. Wait a minute. Saturn is much bigger than Earth. How come I don't weigh more on Saturn? Saturn is bigger than Earth and has a greater mass. But it really is just a big ball of gas. Our Earth is made up of rock that is much more dense. Even though Earth has less mass, its gravity is more concentrated on its surface than is the gravity in the upper part of Saturn's clouds. The face of Saturn we see is its highest clouds. Saturn displays east-west bands, although the bands are fainter than Jupiter's. The banding is the result of high-altitude wind streams. Wind speeds at Saturn's equator are 1,800 kilometers per hour. You could do some high-speed sailing on Saturn. Wow, look at those beautiful rings. Yes, they are lovely. They float like a halo around Saturn's equator. What a regal, majestic sight surely one of the highlights of the solar system. Saturn's ring system begins not far above the tops of Saturn's clouds and extends out 400,000 kilometers into space. The rings are very, very thin, only a few meters thick. As we move away from Saturn, we encounter seven major rings. Close up, we see that these larger rings are actually thousands of ringlets. They look like grooves in a record. What are the rings made of? The rings are made of millions of particles of ice. Most of these particles are about the size of ice cubes. Each of them is actually a tiny moon. Saturn's rings are very beautiful because of the sunlight reflecting off the ice. Do any of the other planets have rings? All of the giant planets have ring systems, although the others are very faint and unimpressive compared to Saturn's. See those white specks going around Saturn? They are some of Saturn's 17 known satellites. Saturn wins the prize for having the most moons of any planet. There's Titan, the second largest moon in the solar system. Titan is unique among the moons of the solar system because it has a well-developed atmosphere, rich in nitrogen. Titan's atmosphere resembles Earth's early atmosphere. No one has ever seen Titan's surface because it is hidden by clouds. Scientists believe that the surface is covered by great oceans of liquid ethane. Liquid ethane is something like very, very cold gasoline. In these ethane oceans, there might be islands or continents of water ice. On Earth, we have the Spice Islands. Perhaps Titan has the Ice Islands. Let's take a quick look at some of the other moons of Saturn. Their surfaces are heavily cratered, like the moon Mimas. As we go around to the other side of Mimas, we see a crater that's a hundred kilometers across. Mimas is lucky that whatever made that crater wasn't a little bit bigger, 
or Mimas wouldn't be here at all. There's Dione. Dione is very cold, 175 degrees below zero Celsius. On Earth, it's possible to crunch ice in your teeth. It is so cold out here that ice is as hard as rock. You'd break your teeth chewing on this ice. Let's take a look at Enceladus. Scientists think that an internal heat source may be producing some sort of water volcanoes, which keep portions of the surface smooth. Well, Nina, we need to be moving on. Let's head for that topsy-turvy world, Uranus. Okay, let's go. And I'll review all about Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun. Saturn is the second largest planet. Saturn has seven major rings and many minor rings. The rings are made up of particles of ice. Saturn has 17 moons, more than any other planet. Heading, Uranus. Distance from Sun, 2,869,600,000 kilometers. Revolution around Sun, 84.01 Earth years. Diameter, 51,200 kilometers. Number of moons, 15. Uranus is the least massive of the giant planets. It orbits the sun in 84 Earth years. Uranus turns on its axis every 18 hours. But relative to the solar system's orbital plane, Uranus lies on its side. Playing follow the leader, the faint rings of Uranus and the Uranian satellites also orbit Uranus on their sides. Nina, here is your weight on Uranus. Nina's weight on Earth, 65 pounds. Nina's weight on Uranus, 52 pounds. Uranus, like its fellow giant planets, has east-west bands, although you have to look very carefully to see them. Remember, Uranus lies on its side. We are looking at Uranus's south pole. This makes the bands of Uranus appear like a bullseye. When we tilt the planet up to a normal orbital position, we see the bands at the same angle as we saw Jupiter's and Saturn's. Uranus is a lovely blue color. We are seeing the tops of Uranus's clouds. The Uranian atmosphere is much colder and less active than the atmospheres of Jupiter or Saturn. This is why the bands are so faint. Why is Uranus colored blue? In this intense cold, methane in the atmosphere condenses into a cloudy haze which envelops the planet. Methane appears blue in sunlight. This is the reason for the beautiful blue-green face Uranus shows us. The interior of the planet is probably like the other large outer planets, a liquid core of molten rock surrounded by hydrogen and helium gas. Uranus has 15 satellites. Let's fly by some of the more interesting ones. We're approaching Oberon. Oberon has dark spots inside several of its large craters. Long ago, when Oberon was warm, meteors struck the surface. Perhaps muddy water splashed upward through the cracks created by the impacts. This may be the reason for these dark spots. Let's take a spin by Titania. Titania is the largest moon of Uranus and is about half the size of Earth's moon. Titania has many small craters and some very distinctive cracks. Like all the large Uranian moons, Titania is composed of a rocky core surrounded by ice. Ariel is another large moon of Uranus. It has a very well-developed system of canyons. All the satellites of Uranus are now frozen solid. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Welcome to Miranda. A very strange little world which appears to have been stuck together with superglue. Actually, maybe something like that did happen. Some scientists believe that Miranda was broken into several pieces when it was hit by a very large object. Later, the force of gravity partially melted the icy pieces and welded Miranda back together. Unlike poor old Humpty Dumpty, lucky Miranda was put back together again. I'd like to see that up close. Wouldn't you, Bernie? Hang on, then. Here we go. 
Miranda is perhaps the most rugged, mountainous world in the solar system. Some of those cliffs are 20 kilometers high. That's 12 and a half miles. We came a little too close to that mountain. I'll have to recalibrate my instruments on our way to Neptune, and you'd better review the facts you've learned about Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. Uranus is the least massive of the giant planets. Uranus orbits the sun on its side. Uranus like all the giant planets, is all gas and liquid. Uranus has 15 moons. Heading, Neptune. Distance from Sun, 4,496,600,000 kilometers. Revolution around Sun, 164.79 Earth years. Diameter, 49,520 kilometers. Number of moons, eight. Finally, we are closing in on Neptune. We're 4.1 billion kilometers from home. Neptune is about the same size as Uranus, but it is somewhat more dense. It takes two long human lifetimes, 165 Earth years, for Neptune to orbit the sun. Neptune's days, like all the giant planets, are short, 19 Earth hours long. Because of its great distance from the sun, Neptune receives about 900 times less light than we do on Earth. Even in full sun, Neptune basks in twilight. No sunburns to worry about here, right, Bernie? Let's calculate how much you would weigh on Neptune. Nina's weight on Earth, 65 pounds. On Neptune, 73 pounds. What a beautiful blue planet Neptune is. Yes, it is beautiful. Neptune is composed mostly of hydrogen and helium gas. Like Uranus, Neptune's blue color is the result of a methane haze in the upper atmosphere. Neptune has a very active atmosphere with well-developed east-west bands and strong storms. Jupiter is not the only planet with a great spot. That big spot you see on Neptune is called the Great Dark Spot. This huge storm system moves around the planet every 18 hours. Farther south, Neptune has a smaller storm called the Little Dark Spot. Let's orbit over Neptune's largest moon, Triton. From here, we can see some of Neptune's other moons orbiting the planet. Neptune has eight satellites. The largest, Triton, is very interesting. It orbits Neptune in a direction opposite to the rotation of the planet. Triton is the only large moon in the solar system to orbit like this. This unusual orbit causes some scientists to believe that Triton is a world that once wandered through space and was captured by Neptune's gravity. At 235 degrees below zero Celsius, Triton is very cold. In fact, Triton is only 38 degrees from being as cold as it is possible to be. Triton is a strange place. Its surface is composed of water ice, methane ice, and nitrogen ice. And it even has ice volcanoes. Nitrogen gas and hydrocarbon crystals erupt from these volcanoes into the thin, frigid atmosphere, then fall to the surface like black snow. Triton is strange, and so are all of the giant planets and their moons. I'll review what I have learned about Neptune while you pilot us toward Pluto. Neptune is the eighth planet from the Sun. Neptune has two massive storms, the Little Dark Spot and the Great Dark Spot. Neptune's moon, Triton, orbits in the opposite direction from the other moons. Neptune has eight moons. Nina, 
We are very far from our warm Earth, but we are still 1.3 billion kilometers from Pluto, the farthest planet from the Sun. Heading, Pluto. Distance from Sun, 5,899,900,000 kilometers. Revolution around the Sun, 247.69 Earth years. Diameter, 2,345 kilometers. Number of satellites, one. Because it is so far out on the fringes of our solar system, no space vehicle has ever visited Pluto. It is beyond the range of our van ship. But we do know quite a bit about Pluto. It is the smallest planet, even smaller than Earth's moon. Pluto's gravity is only 5% of Earth's gravity. Unlike the other outer planets, you can stand on Pluto. If you were there, this is what you would weigh. Nina's weight on Earth, 65 pounds. On Pluto, three pounds. If that's all I weighed, I bet I could leap tall buildings with a single bound. Yes, you could be Super Nina and Super Bernie. Pluto takes a very long 248 Earth years to orbit the sun. Pluto turns on its axis every 6.4 Earth days. Pluto has a satellite called Charon. Charon orbits very close to Pluto. In fact, Charon is 20 times closer to Pluto than Earth's moon is to Earth. From Pluto, Charon appears to be eight times larger than Earth's moon appears from Earth. Like Uranus, Pluto and Charon rotate on their sides. Because they are so close to each other, the gravities of these two worlds strongly affect each other. They are locked in an endless dance around the edge of the solar system. Nina, if you lived your whole life on the near side of Pluto, you would always see Charon. You would never see a moon rise or set. But if you lived your entire life on the far side of Pluto, you would never know your planet had a moon. What are these little worlds like? They seem so strange and far away. They are very, very cold. They are probably within 50 degrees of absolute zero. Scientists believe Pluto has a rocky core surrounded by a thick layer of ice. At the surface, Pluto may have a layer of methane ice or nitrogen ice, and it probably has a thin methane atmosphere. Pluto and Charon probably have some surprises waiting for the first spacecraft to venture into their icy realm. Well, I hope someday to see Pluto and Charon. But Bernie is getting cold, so lay in a course for home. Meanwhile, I will review what I have learned about Pluto. Pluto is the most distant planet from the Sun. Pluto is the smallest planet. Pluto may have a thin methane atmosphere. Pluto has one moon. Its name is Charon. I hope you had fun coming along with Bernie and me on our journey to all the planets in our solar system. And I hope you learned as much about them as I did. Bye for now. This has been a presentation of Allied Video Corporation. We produce a variety of video products for the classroom. For a complete list of these and other educational tapes, please call toll-free 1-800-926-5892.